everybody, I am Wildman Wes, and welcome to Shocktoberfest 2021, day number two. Today we have something that's a little funny and a little scary, a little mix of both. It's always good on this channel, right? Today we have Brian Usna's 1985 adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's Reanimator. Ho ho ho! Now we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty and the dirtiest of the dirty, so to speak. So this movie is about a character named Herbert West. He's a doctor and a brilliant surgeon who is found supposedly killing a professor named Professor Gruber out in Switzerland while he's trying to invest in a serum that brings back living tissue, dead bodies, call it what you will. That's basically the opening premise of the film. We fast forward to a, a hospital called Miskatonic. This is in Arkham, Massachusetts. Arkham. Hmm. Why do I have to think that name sounds so familiar? Ah, now I'm mixing up comic books and movies. Ah, we'll, we'll forget about that. So while we fast forward to the Miskatonic Center, we meet this man named Dan Kane. He is an aspiring surgeon and a doctor who hasn't had the best attempts at saving people's lives when the time comes down to it. To the line, so to speak. The flat line. And... While he's in the morgue talking to a couple of other people working there, he meets Herbert West. They become friends, they bond, even though Dan notices there's something not right about him. Even his girlfriend, Megan, whose father is the dean of the school that he goes to, as well as working in the medical field. One thing that Dan notices that isn't right, right off the bat, is that his cat is dead in Herbert's refrigerator, or freezer for lack thereof. And one night he hears some screeching, some terrible noise. He goes into Herbert's room to investigate, sees nothing, and goes downstairs, and wouldn't you know it, he sees Herbert fighting the reanimated cat. <laughs> the plot thickens. And throughout all this, there's a brain surgeon named Carl Hill, who has an infatuation for Megan, and also a hatred for Herbert West because Herbert West also has a mutual hatred for Hill because Hill stole a lot of ideas from West's predecessor Professor Gruber and so there's a lot of hatred going on in this one to the point where West has a little fun with him later on after Dan finds out that Herbert West's serum to reanimate living or in dead tissue actually works, they go on a little spree of their own where they're reanimating a lot of people. I mean, there was reanimating a bodybuilder in the morgue, and unfortunately they had to subdue Megan's father while seeing something he shouldn't have, and they had to reanimate him as well. He ends up being put into a mental institution where Dr. Hill wants to perform brain surgery, and in order to also get some sort of love and affection from his daughter Megan. Well, that doesn't also work out because eventually Herbert reanimates Carl Hill as well after decapitating him. And oh, that scene is very, very priceless. What Herbert doesn't realize is that Carl Hill has taken some of the serum and injected it into many corpses to pretty much take over the hospital and take over West himself. West realizes the error of his ways and he starts to basically take the serum and overdose Hill in order for all of the bodies to fall down. Now, in the process of this, Megan gets choked out by one of the corpses, and Dan is trying to save her on the medicine table, or the medical table, for what you will, and realizes it's almost too late, and at the end, he decides to inject her with the serum. We're going to talk about what I like and what I don't like about this now. We're going to talk about the things I like. I like the comedy and the gore factor. It's very uh, early splatterpunk. I do love a lot of the blood that gets sprayed around. It's very Sam Raimi-esque, much like with Evil Dead. Um, a lot of the humor, I, I'd like to think of this movie as kind of uh, Young Frankenstein 2.0 because there is a lot of that young Frankenstein type humor between Herbert and Dan, and especially at one point when Dr. Hill is decapitated and he does some things that, well, we can't show you on the back screen here because, you know, age appropriate. Yeah, can't, can't, can't do it, can't do it. Let's just say um, the word head is involved. Um, anyways, <laughs> the big thing that I love about this, I mean, the cast 
they do what they can for the most part in this, but Jeffrey Combs, come on ladies and gentlemen, the man is golden. The man has been in a lot, 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 lot of crazy films. One of the most recent ones I, I saw in the past few years was Would You Rather, and oh my god, that character makes Herbert West look like a... I can't say it. <laughs> As I mentioned about how much I love the fact how funny it is at times, I love the cat scene, especially after it gets reanimated and they're fighting, like, a cat off camera. Like, at, at, there are points where the cat is not there and they're just knocking each other over and screaming. And a lot of it, I think, was an impromptu scene that was directed by, by Yuzna. And I guarantee there was a good chance a lot of them were laughing off set just watching, uh, you know, Weston and Dan, like, completely falling over themselves trying to find the cat. Even the music with the opening sequence, it's, uh, it seemed very, it's campy. It was very campy. It just, it wanted to sound scary, but at the same time, it was almost like zany circus music. And the music done in this movie was by uh, Richard Band, which, I mean, I, I need to go back online and double check some of the stuff that he's done in the past, but regardless, it was very, very campy and even enough to be a little nerve-wracking. So, I mean, it's that funny, but yet disturbing. And I like that. It's my thing. Now it's time to talk about some of the things that I don't like about this film. The love story between Dan and Megan is very watered down because at the same time, it's this is supposed to be a horror movie. Yeah, there's supposed to be some connections with characters. There's supposed to be some heartfelt sentiments because you have to grow to love these characters, especially when they love themselves. And when one dies, then you feel sad, but at the same time, you want to get that revenge moment where the hero kills the villain. But in this situation, it just... It was a situation of Dan wanted to consummate the relationship with Megan a little bit more than he was getting at the time, and she was doing the... Oh no, oh no, don't do that! So, it just... It seemed like, okay, our, a part of me was just like, you know... Are, are you gonna fuck or are you gonna die? Like, what, what's gonna happen here? Like, seriously, just let, 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 let's get to the story because this is wasting my time. I know that sounds weird, but eh, rabble, rabble. Some of the characters in the movie that weren't shown as much, much like this love story that was overdrawn, there was a security guard in this film that he's only in there once in a while. It just kind of, I guess you could say comic relief, but it wasn't funny. I don't know why, it just, it just really wasn't. Another thing with the plot hole is the overdosing Dr. Hill in order for all the other corpses to pretty much disintegrate and just fall down. It seems very similar to like a vampire movie where you kill the head vampire and they all go back to normal. See this, I, I just, I, I don't know, I, I just don't think I can get on board with that concept. I mean, great movie and all, but that, the, the ending just, it, 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 was, it was like a fart. It was like a wet, juicy fart and I didn't like the smell of it. So anyways, it's time to grade this film. Now with the pros and the cons I've talked about, yeah, there, there are some things that I didn't like that do tend to dummy down the grade slightly. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know what? I still love this movie, even with its flaws. You know, like like day one, I'm gonna give this one an A minus. You know what? It's not about a bias, it's I'm, I'm taking the good with the bad. And the bad was pretty bad, but the humor in this movie definitely helped, and Jeffrey Combs' performance of Herbert West was so great that they spawned so many sequels. So many sequels. And they're all just as good as the last. So, I dig it. On that note, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you leave a thumbs up. Leave a thumbs down if you don't agree with some of the things that I said. Or, you know what? Or maybe there's some things that you saw that I didn't see. Leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know. Like, educate me, because I like educating back. And that's all that matters, as long as we're, we're helping each other out, right? Also, make sure that you push that little red button and ring that bell for instant notifications so you see what's going to happen tomorrow on day three of Shocktoberfest 2021. Wild Man Wes, and I'll see you soon. Stay tuned and stay scared. <laughs>